tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. You know, in the soybean residue here, Brian, I'm just fired up because we learned a lot of things in soybeans. We're going to talk about lessons that we've learned in soybeans this year on today's show. We also want to discuss organic matter in soil. You're probably thinking about fall fertility and what you're going to do in terms of tillage, those types of things, You're probably doing those things right now on your farm. We want you to be thinking about organic matter because it's so important in your soil and what you do this fall could impact you for many years down the road. We have a weed of the week that we've never fought on our farm, Brian. We're very fortunate we've never had this weed, but you probably know a little bit more about this weed if you've seen it on your farm. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we want to talk a little about corn standability because if you're a non-farmer, you've probably been driving down the road seeing some corn fields are standing perfectly straight and nice and tall, and other corn fields, the corn's fallen all over. What's the difference? Well, a lot of times early in harvest, if there are corn fields that are falling all over, the farmer gets out there right away. He doesn't want to take a chance that wind or snow or heavy rains are going to make his corn completely lay on the ground where he just can't even pick it up. So farmers will try to get after those fields early, but there are other fields that are standing perfect. And you say, wow, that field looks like it's ready to go. How come a farmer has left it out there? In some cases, it may be his only field that's standing very well, and that's why he's left it until last. So what it really comes back to is what the farmer has done in terms of management in the field. Certainly there are differences in varieties. Corn is not just corn. There are different varieties of corn and certain varieties may put a little more effort into the stock quality than other varieties. So there will be a little bit of difference there. The number one difference we see in most farms is fertility. If one farmer in his particular field has ample fertility and the right balance of fertility, including things like sulfur and micronutrients, he will most likely have a better stand. In another field, if either that farmer or a different farmer doesn't have the right fertility, he's got a problem. One of the biggest single nutrients that we talk about quite often in terms of stock quality and stock size is potassium. Unfortunately, a lot of the potassium that's in most soils is in the form of a rock, so it doesn't do farmers a lot of good until maybe 20 years down the road. That's why farmers have to supplement with a lot of potassium just about every year. On our farm, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on potassium every year just to make sure that we've got good support for all our crops. You know, the food that farmers are putting out there for their plants is very important. But the other side of it, Brian, is sometimes plants become the food. Like with corn rootworms, for example, and we've seen this across the country, especially over the last decade. There have been more corn rootworm problems than I've really ever heard about, especially in the northern U.S. But even where there have been corn rootworms for a long time, some of the BT products where there's a protein uh, that, that takes care of these bugs for us, that's right in the plant, uh, well, we're getting some resistance to that. And there are fewer farmers that are putting out insecticide to try and kill these bugs, or at least there had been for a number of years. So we've got more corn rootworm problems out there. And what they will do in the midsummer is feed on corn roots. And once they chew off a bunch of corn roots, now the plant doesn't have much of an anchor anymore. And in some cases, when you've got fields laying over, the fertility might be right, but they had a bug problem. Another thing we look at quite often is drainage. Out in the field, if the water table gets too high, in other words, if let's say the water table's at a foot deep or foot and a half deep, all the roots that are deeper than a foot or foot and a half deep are going to die. They have to have oxygen there. If they literally just have three straight days where they have no oxygen, those roots are dead. So all the deep roots are gone. And if that happens, then obviously it's a lot easier for a plant to tip over because it doesn't have the proper bracing. It also doesn't get the proper nutrition and the amount, right amount of water at the right time. So all a farmer's doing when he puts tile out there is just lowering the water table. And it's not lowering it way down deep in the ground. It's just lowering it to say three feet, that's it. So there's a little bit of water that gets removed from the soil sometimes in the spring, like on our farm out of these tile lines. But when that happens, then we have a lot better root growth deeper in the soil. And of course, we are talking about agriculture here. So that 
that means our crops are out there exposed to whatever weather we're going to have. And sometimes there are 70, 80, 90 mile an hour straight winds that come through and you see almost everyone's corn go down. Sometimes we have those things that pop up. Now you can certainly do everything right, managing insects, managing fertility, managing drainage, those kind of things in your field. And sometimes you'll be fortunate and your crop will stand even in a condition like that. But sometimes that wind is just so extreme. So a lot of times farmers are doing the best job they possibly can making all the right calls and they could still have some corn go down. Yep, they could. Just a couple last things I was going to mention that farmers can control. They can put fungicide out to control diseases. They can address soil pH issues with lime or elemental sulfur, depending on if the pH is low or high. They can address their weed issues. We talked about corn rootworms earlier. There are other bugs that could affect corn too. Compaction. There are just a number of management steps. And if the farmer does all those things right, then like Darren said, the weather gives less of an impact later on. Well, there are a lot of decisions that farmers have to make, that's for sure. One of those big decisions is controlling our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? What's next in weed control technology? Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans, an advanced soybean product with tolerance to dicamba and glyphosate. Roundup Ready 2 Extend Soybeans. Extend your control. For years, farm logic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Capella corn headers are designed for producers who expect more. Expect more grain in your bin. Expect an industry-leading two-year manufacturer's warranty. Expect Capella design chopping and folding options that save you time and money. And whether red, green, or yellow, expect row size options that fit your operation because all producers deserve the best. Expect Capello. It's a head above the rest. Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech Electric System from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. At Titan Machinery and Case IH, we offer better solutions for all your production needs. It's more than our job, it's who we are. We are parts. We are service. We are training. And most importantly, we are here for you. In any season, for every reason, we've got you covered. Case IH and Titan Machinery, better solutions. Proven herbicide for decades, Dicamba can provide burn down residual control of tough and resistant weeds for up to 14 days. That's another reason why farmers will use Dicamba for years to come. Brought to you by Roundup Ready Plus Weed Management Solutions. One of the most important things in soils that doesn't get talked about a whole lot is organic matter. Everybody likes to focus on N, P, and K, and there is a fair amount of talk about soil pH anymore. We discuss drainage, we talk compaction, but you know what? If you have the right amount of organic matter in your soil, you're gonna have more nutrients available. You're going to have less compaction. You're going to have better drainage. All those things are going to improve if you can improve your organic matter levels in the soil. I think we're in a great spot here, right by our great grandpa's farm, and you think about, okay, over 100 years now, our family has been on this ground. And you say, okay, well, how has that organic matter changed over that time? Well, there is a way that you can tell how the organic matter levels have changed. Go to your fence line, pull a soil sample there. The fence line's been undisturbed. There's grass that's been growing in there forever. And when we look at a fence line, our organic matter levels in this area, a lot of times are in the fives. Maybe they're even 6% somewhere in that five to 6% organic matter range. Out in our fields, many of them are in the two to 4% organic matter level. So by our farming practices over the last 100 years, we've actually burned up some of our organic matter with our tillage, with our cropping practices. Now we're trying to build that back up. 
organic matter is important for so many things that we're going to talk about today. Okay, as far as those things it's important for, we've already discussed a few. We said compaction, it's a big issue. Think of this organic matter kind of like a cushion. It's out there in your soil and it can kind of spring back, as opposed to if it's just soil, that can get compacted together. You want some of that organic matter out there. Organic matter releases nutrients. It releases a lot of phosphorus, nitrogen, some sulfur. So it can hold nutrients, it can release them later on. It can also hold quite a bit of water. What we always tell people is roughly for every 1% additional organic matter you have, you have 4% more water holding capacity. So let's say you had 2% organic matter versus 6%, that's 4% times 4, that's 16% more water you could hold. That's a huge deal, especially in a dry year and non-irrigated ground. In terms of other things, I mean moving water through the soil, just having air in the soil, having better microbial activity well, in the that's, soil. That's a, a big whole one. big list. You look at organic matter and that's where a lot of that microbial life in our soil is really based around. And when you have low levels of organic matter, chances are you've got pretty low soil life levels out in your field. And it's, it's hard to know exactly what that is, but you can sure see it in things like residue breakdown. If you've got fields where the corn stalks from three years ago are still laying in your field, chances are you probably have a lower level of organic matter and you've got not as much microbial activity going on under the soil as the fields where, wow, in the middle of the summer, all my residue's gone from last year. That tells me you've got a pretty healthy soil. Okay, so I mentioned the nutrients that do get released out of that organic matter. Let me get specific here. For every 1% of organic matter you have in your soil, on average, you're going to have some mineralization out of that in the summer that amounts to 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen, 4 to 7 pounds of phosphorus, and 2 to 3 pounds of sulfur. So that's for every 1% of organic matter. Just think if you had 7 or 8% organic matter, you've got a tremendous amount of free nutrients that are coming available for your next crop, that's an awesome thing when that happens. And you're going to have more mineralization if you have a little bit more heat. You do have the microbial activity Darren's talking about. You have at least a little bit of moisture out there. So you want to have a good healthy soil and decent growing conditions and then you'll have more of that that'll come available. All right, so you may be saying, hey, this organic matter sounds pretty good. How do I get more of it? And honestly, that's a big focus on our farm. We are really trying to build our organic matter levels in all of our fields because we know it's going to be a good thing for us long term. It's a good thing for the environment and for us as farmers. So one of the first things that we're doing is modifying what we're doing on tillage. Now if you're doing heavy deep tillage every year on your farm, it's really tough to build up organic matter levels because as you introduce oxygen into that equation, you're burning up that residue so much faster than if you were in a no-till situation. Now we don't no-till a lot of ground on our farm. We've kind of found a happy medium where we do quite a bit of strip till. So we're only tilling where we absolutely have to and in between the rows, we're leaving it untilled. Now when you're thinking about that, you say, well, wait a minute, you're still doing some tillage. Yes, we are. But here's the difference. We're leaving those root masses intact from last year's crop. So in our 30 inch corn and soybean fields, we'll move over 15 inches and build our next zone there. That way we can leave the mass from, well in this case, a soybean field, we can leave that soybean mass intact or we can leave that corn root ball intact and just go out halfway in between the rows. Yep, so those roots can then naturally decay and become true organic matter in the soil. So on this tillage thing, if you look at the last 100 years across the entire United States, organic matter levels have shrunk. It's due to tillage. Additional things you can do if you wanna increase organic matter levels on your farm, use biological products, use some manure, and planting crops with lots of roots. For example, on average, corn has five times the root mass of soybeans. So on our farm in the last quite a few years now, we've raised a lot more corn than we have soybeans. Not that we don't like soybeans. Especially on ground where we're really having a problem with organic matter. Right. In those situations where we've got some erosion or you know we pick up a new piece of ground and the organic matter levels are really low, in those situations we're really going to focus more on a continuous corn rotation, at least for a short period of time to try and build things back up. Well once again, organic matter is tremendously important in your soil. If you've got more organic matter, over a long period of time, the odds are extremely high you're going to have higher yielding crops. If you want to improve organic matter levels on your farm, just reduce the tillage, plant crops with lots of roots, use some manure, and use some biological products. Well, organic matter probably doesn't have any impact on our Weed of the Week. I wish it did, but we'll share what methods will control this weed coming up later in the show. 
Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. For lower cost, higher production, Mandeco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandeco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandeco Agri dealer. Visit NorthCountryMarketing.biz or call. Wake up, breakfast is served. Your roots crave pee. Most of your applied pee gets tied up in the soil, a natural phenomenon known as phosphorus fixation. Fix the problem with a veil phosphorus fertilizer enhancer. A veil makes more pee available to your roots. Here, here, and here. Increasing pee availability can lead to increased pee uptake in the plant. That's more pee, more pee, and more pee. More phosphorus for your crop can be more results in your bin. An average of 9.6 bushels per acre of corn. Breakfast is served. Supercharge your pee with a veil. Whether you're feeding cattle, milking cows, or baling hay, the work on your farm is never done, which is why you need equipment that works as hard as you do. Get the efficiency and versatility you need with Case IH. From farm all compact and utility tractors to balers and mowers, all Case IH equipment is designed with one thing in mind, getting the job done. To learn more, visit caseih.com livestock. Well, we've got another fall harvest season behind us on our farm, and a lot of farmers do around the country as well. We want to talk a little bit about some of the lessons we learn, both from our own operation and from farmers that we work with around the United States. All right, well, when we talk about lessons learned in soybeans, it's the same thing almost every year. People give up on soybeans way too early. Right. You think about it, this year, for example, we were behind. Most of the country, the soybeans were two or even three weeks behind where they normally were at, and we get out to the third week of August and a lot of guys hadn't really seen much for aphids or spider mites in our area and all of a sudden they showed up. But people thought, you know, the beans are going to start turning real soon here. I'm just going to let it go. And the guys that did spray versus the ones that didn't, it made a huge difference. Yep, because the big thing is corn, a lot of the yield is made relatively early in the season. With soybeans, so much of the yield is made late in the season. Now that doesn't mean you can do everything wrong in the beginning of the year and still end up with a great crop. You got to do it good all the way along. But all we're saying here is, yeah, it might be dry in the middle of the summer, whatever, who cares? Soybeans actually like that in the middle of the summer. They like a drought year in the middle of the summer and they like sunlight. We had a lot of fields that were yielding over 60 bushels with basically no rain for two months in the middle of the summer, but then we did have some August rain. We had one rain in August, inch and a half, and bam, 60 bushel beans on mini fields. Okay, a lot of guys now over the last few years have been spraying fungicide whenever they're spraying the insecticide, figuring if the bugs are biting the plant, they're opening it up to disease, I better protect against disease as well. Well, this year, since we were so far behind, behind, many people were concerned about, I don't want to have green stems at harvest. I, know. I don't want to have my beans staying too green late in the fall. And that was a mistake leaving it out this year. The guys that were putting in the fungicide, for the most part, were getting good returns. In our fungicide trials this year, the racehorse varieties, we got a nice return on fungicide. The really defensive varieties, it was kind of hit or miss whether we got a decent return. The other thing is the time of the year that we did see some return on fungicide use in soybeans. We saw more of a return this year, spraying at V4 when we had six or eight inch tall soybeans than we did at R2 or R3, full bloom soybeans, like where we normally would see a good return. Part of the reason is we were wet in May and we had trouble getting into fields because many of the fields were wet. And 
And in that case, we saw a lot of septoria brown spot, even more so than we normally see, and it paid off pretty nicely to put a fungicide on early. Another thing is tile. Having good drainage out there, even though, again, it was a relatively dry year, if the soybeans didn't get off to a good start, they were hurt all season long. So well, and planting we... date too. Just all getting in one week earlier at yes. our field day site. One of the seed companies that was gonna put in a little plot at our field day site, we got our plot in a week ahead of them. That was the only difference. We were a week ahead. And by the time we got to our field day in the third week of July, well, our beans were probably six inches to a foot taller. They looked a lot better than the beans planted just one week later. So planting date was super critical this year in soybeans. And yeah, getting back to your drainage, for most guys, that was the difference. If they had well-drained right. fields, they could get in a little earlier, where if they had poor drainage, it was a challenge. Well, for me, the number one factor, once again, and I keep harping on this every year, you've gotta have good fertility for soybeans. If you're only fertilizing your corn and not fertilizing your soybeans, I would encourage you, start running some trials on your farm because what we found is when we fertilize soybeans, we can raise 60, 70 bushel beans. When we don't fertilize soybeans, we're dropping, we're losing a lot of yield. That's not a good thing. You kind of hit on it though in the organic matter talk earlier, Brian. When we're thinking about it, why does that make such a big difference in soybeans? They've got one fifth the root mass of corn. They just right. can't find those nutrients if we aren't getting nutrients out there that are available and placed correctly for the beans. So if you broadcast your P and K, those soybean plants are not gonna find 80% of that P and K. So yeah, that's fine, just put on much more fertilizer. So we've been doing some long-term studies on our farm where we've gone 50% more P and K in the broadcast versus what we put on in the band for 11 years in a row now on about 500 acres one way, 500 acres the other way. In other words, 500 acres broadcast with a high P and K, 500 acres banded with a lower P and K, we're getting similar yields on both corn and soybeans. But this, our cost of production is right, so much we're, higher we're on the broadcast. We're spending a lot more on that broadcast. So you can do it, but it's gonna require more fertilizer. Well, there's certainly a lot of things that we've learned on our farm this year in our soybean fields, and also that we've learned around the country looking at what other top farmers are doing. So pay attention. Don't just go into next year thinking, well, this is what I did last year. I'll do the same plan again for this year. You only get about 20 or 30 crops, and maybe where you're at in your life, you may only have just a few crops left. You may be close to retirement age. Now's your chance. You can get big soybean yields this coming year. Just make some changes on your farm, learn some lessons in the beans, and you could be moving ahead to higher yields. Yeah, and the big thing is when soybeans are worth as much money as they are, you can make a lot of money raising a good acre of soybeans. So just invest a little time with it. Well, one of the things you'll need to invest time to uh, make sure you solve in your soybean fields is controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Your farm tells a story, one that continues with the decisions you make. Introducing the Enlist Weed Control System an advanced herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate for exceptional control of tough weeds. The next chapter begins. Our weed of the week today is Jimson weed. Well, thank goodness we don't have Jimson weed on our farm. It's one of those tough weeds to control, but also a dangerous weed because it contains a sedative and a hypnotic. And if you eat some of it, it could potentially be fatal. I don't well, like those kind of weeds, Brian. Yeah, I know, but I don't think I'm gonna be eating Jimson weed anytime soon. Well, I hope not. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of names for Jimson weed, Moonflower, Jamestown weed, Thorn Apple. I mean, I like those kind of weeds. They're kind of fun for me because depending on where you're at in the country, somebody might say, oh, what do we do about Thorn Apple? And I have to think for a minute, okay, what, what's Thorn Apple? Uh, it's Jimson weed. So when we think about it in crops, I look at it in corn. If you're starting out with Sure Start, Triple Flex, Balance Flex, Verdict, those types of pre's, you can do a pretty good job controlling it. Post-emerge, almost everything works. I like Status the best, but Callisto, Lotus Impact, Hornet, I'll do a nice job too. All right, let's talk about soybeans. What do you suggest? Well, on soybeans, I like Sharp and it's very effective in a burn down. I like all of the Authority products, probably Authority MTZ the best. Post-emerge in beans, Bassagran's probably the best besides your Roundup and Liberty option. 
options. In wheat, I like wide match post, I like sharp and pre, and tank mix in some addition broad spec or addition tank mix with your wide match, you'll get better activity. As always, we recommend that you download the free Ag PhD Field Guide app for your smartphone or iPad, and you'll find Jimson weed on there if you forget or you don't take notes today during the show. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. What are farmers doing to feed the planet? They're using Quadtrek technology, soil management, and planting systems from Case IH to foster a better growing environment that maximizes yield potential. Visit CaseIH.com to be ready. Does variable rate population really pay? In today's Iron Talk, I'll share the results of a variable rate population study on our farm, as well as discuss some of the observations made during this growing season. The technology is out there, and it's proven. You may already have it on your farm, but are you using variable rate populations across your fields? It certainly makes a lot of common sense to plant a little thicker population in the good areas of the field while planting less population in poorer areas. The question is, does it make dollars and cents? We planted corn in 30-inch rows at a 32,000 population as a check, compared to where we varied the population from 28,000 to 32,000 and up to 35,000 based on yield zones. Here are the results. The 32,000 population check yielded 167.62 bushels per acre. Not bad in South Dakota on a dry year. However, the variable rate population yielded 173.4 bushels per acre. That's nearly a 6 bushel advantage. At $5 per bushel corn, that's about $30 per acre better than planting a flat rate across the whole field. Sure, there are some questions. How do you set the population rates? How do you determine the zones? The point is, there is some added profit potential for your farm. For us, we spend only about 15 minutes per field setting up the zones and selecting the populations we're going to vary between. It doesn't have to get so complicated. Sure, you can make it a little more complicated if you want, but it can be fairly simple. Take a look at variable rate populations on your farm for the coming season. It's a great learning experience and could be a nice way to add to your bottom line. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Looking to maximize yield? Quick Roots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quick Roots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quick Roots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your Quick Roots today. You expect a lot from this seed, and as it grows through each stage of development, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers is there, feeding your crop exactly what it needs when it needs it. So no matter how you fertilize, no matter when, AgroLiquid efficiently brings all the nutrients your crop needs for a great harvest. From one kernel in the ground to 600 on the ear. For better yields and better quality, Agroculture Liquid Fertilizers. For lower cost, higher production, Mandaco Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier, less costly, spring or fall. The Mandaco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandaco Agri dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call. If you watch Ag PhD TV, you'll love the new Ag PhD radio show each weekday on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. This is Darren Hefty. On the new Ag PhD radio program, we'll take live callers and provide the agronomic information and brotherly banter you've come to expect from Ag PhD. We'll feature a Back 40 segment where we talk to farmers and agronomists around the country to share what's going on with crop production. And it wouldn't be Ag PhD without addressing a pest of the day. Tune in to the Ag PhD radio show each weekday at 2 p.m. Central on Rural Radio Sirius XM Channel 80. 
That's all the time we have for this week's program, but be sure to tune in again next time for another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Can you increase your field's topsoil layer by reducing tillage, planting high residue crops, utilizing cover crops, and adding manure to the soil? Topsoil can be rebuilt. For more information, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.